Hi and welcome back to MRTV. This is the full MRTV review of the HTC Vive Cosmos. Now this headset has been around for more than a month now and you're probably wondering why does the MRTV review come so late? Well, I wanted to give HTC the benefit of the doubt because in the very first days after launch, I was shocked by the unbelievably terrible tracking. Now, more than a month has passed and HTC actually did update the tracking and I am on the latest beta software for the firmware. Now, if this actually does make any difference, I'm going to let you know in this review. Let me first talk about the questions that I'm going to answer in this review. The Vive Cosmos costs $699 in the US and €799 Euros in Europe. So it's $250 more expensive than the Oculus Rift S and even €350 Euros more expensive than the Rift S in Europe. On the other side, the Valve Index full package costs thousand dollars. So this here is three hundred dollars cheaper than the full Valve Index package and in Europe two hundred euros cheaper than the full Valve Index package. The questions of course is the Vive Cosmos worth it the additional hundred bucks as compared to the Rift S and the other question of course is it worth it to go for the Vive Cosmos save some hundred bucks over the full Valve Index package. For both questions, I can confidently say no. No for the vast majority of people who are watching this video. Now, for all the reasons why I can so clearly say so, stay tuned. I'm going to compare this headset with the direct competition and I'm going to let you know why I also don't fully dismiss this headset and for who actually this headset might be interesting. And all of this is coming up. Welcome back again to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and this channel is all about virtual reality. It's all about unbiased and honest reviews just like this one. So if you're into that, why don't you subscribe to this channel right now and click on the bell button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Now for this review, I did not get the Vive Cosmos for free from HTC. Actually, they didn't even want to lend it to me after I asked them to. Probably they watched my Vive Pro review and it was a bit too honest for them. I don't know. So I bought that myself and I could only do so thanks to your support. Thank you so much, dear MRTV Patreons. Thank you so much for your support. And if you like that, that I buy these headsets and give you honest and unbiased reviews, then why don't you also join the MRTV Elite at mrtvelite.com for only $3 a month. You make sure that I can keep on reviewing these headsets like I do. Also, a big thank you to the three MRTV champions, the three MRTV sponsors. First of all, Modicap. Modicap makes amazing modifications, just like these sound kit modifications for the Rift S and the Quest. Then, thank you to Human Eyes. Human Eyes does this amazing Views XR camera, a 3D camera that can do 180 degrees and also 360 degrees. My favorite VR camera. And my third MRTV sponsor is VR Cover. Of course, we all know them. They are making the hygiene solutions for virtual reality headsets. All right, with this basic information out of the way, let's get into the review. Let me tell you what I think about this headset. And why don't we start with the positive aspects? Let's start with the comfort, the build quality and the features of the Vive Cosmos. Let's start with comfort. In my opinion, the Vive Cosmos is a very comfortable headset and it achieves this by using this halo kind of design with an additional head strap. And well, that's the same basically like the Rift S is doing. However, as what the material is concerned, they're using the same material here for the back and the front 
that is also used in the PlayStation VR. So this is some kind of rubbery material, which is super hygienic. And if you do sweat, you can easily wipe that clean. Also, if you happen to have to exchange it, you can actually take this out completely, which is really cool. For the facial interface, it is very similar material to what we've seen with the Vive and the Vive Pro. So it's very comfortable. However, it would also easily get wet when you start to sweat. But the good thing is you can completely get rid of it with Velcro. So you can add something else, like for example, a VR cover. So this is definitely good. Yeah, very comfortable. I really like to wear it. And also, what I also like is this flip up display. So during gameplay, if you want to have a short break, you can simply do this, get into reality, get your beverage and then go back into virtual reality and it works fine. I've heard reports of people, other reviewers who don't quite like this and who say that after they put it back, well, the position is not the same anymore or yeah, there would be some light leakage, but I could not back this kind of claim. For me, this works fine. I really enjoy this flip up display. And yeah, overall, it's a very comfortable headset. The Vive Cosmos should also be comfortable for people wearing glasses because the eye box is pretty spacious and it shouldn't be a problem to wear your glasses using the Vive Cosmos. And actually, I also tried it before. It does work. Now talking about the build quality, there's absolutely nothing that I could complain about. The device feels like a high quality device and it does feel sturdy. I don't feel that this would break anytime soon. So this mechanism works flawlessly. Everything looks good. Everything works well. And I especially like it that they thought about little details as in that you could, for example, remove this back padding here even or even this front padding. You can remove these things. Probably you want to exchange them after a few months or years. So yeah, about the build quality, this is without a doubt a well-built device. Let's talk about the features of the headset. One important feature is the IPD adjustment. For people who have a low IPD or a high IPD, you can adjust the lenses to simply fit your eyes. And this is something that is not present on the Rift S, but which is also present on the Valve Index. Something that this headset is missing though is the eye relief. For the Rift S, you can change the distance from the headset to your eyes. And the same is true for the Valve Index. With this headset, you don't have that. You cannot put the headset further away from your glasses, for example, if you're wearing glasses and you also cannot put it closer to your eyes. So this is something that they didn't include into this headset. Then, yeah, we have these headphones here, very similar to those of the HTC Deluxe audio strap. And another interesting feature is that this is compatible with the Vive wireless kit. So if you want to add wireless capabilities, you can do so by purchasing the wireless kit, which will set you back more than $300 and more than 400 euros if you are in Europe. Then another interesting feature and I'm going to talk about this a bit more when we talk about the tracking is that you can exchange those face plates. And as I mentioned earlier, later there's going to be an additional face plate which will make this compatible with the Valve Lighthouse tracking. So this is quite a feature packed headset. The next part of this review deals with the display, the lenses and the FOV. For lots of you, probably a very important part of this review. So we're dealing here with two displays and they are both LC displays, just like the Rift S and the Valve Index. The resolution is a bit higher, 1440 times 1700. So a bit higher than the displays of the Valve Index and quite a bit higher in resolution as the Rift S is concerned. So how do the displays look like? They look good. Everything is very sharp and the colors, especially the colors are really nice and I like them. High contrast, really popping 
and very important, the black values are pretty good for an LC display. So in this category, the Vive Cosmos actually looks really nice. In direct comparison with the Rift S display, I can confidently say that the Cosmos display does look better. We have nicer colors, we have nicer black values, and we have less screen door effect. However, this does not mean that the Rift S display would be bad, and in the grand scheme, it's not such a huge difference, but I simply want to let you know, yes, you can see a quality difference between the display of the Vive Cosmos and of that of the Rift S. Now comparing the displays of the Cosmos with that of the Valve Index, that's a whole different story. You would expect to have less screen door effect with the Cosmos because you have a high resolution over a smaller FOV. And I'm going to tell you all about the FOVs in a moment. However, that's actually not the case. So the engineers of Valve have done an amazing job of hiding that screen door effect with a special layer over their displays. So for that, nearly no difference between the two headsets. Also, in terms of colors, both look great and both have an advantage over the Rift S. So I couldn't crown a clear winner here for the display when comparing this against the index. However, the index does have the bigger FOV and that is without a doubt much nicer than what we have here with the Vive Cosmos. One advantage that the Vive Cosmos actually does have over the Valve Index is the amount of God rays. So there is definitely less God rays with the Vive Cosmos as compared to the index. So now let's talk a bit about the lenses of the Vive Cosmos. If you look at them first, you would think, hey, the same as in Vive and Vive Pro. But actually, if you compare the God rays, the God rays are now not as pronounced as in Vive and Vive Pro. And that's definitely an important step forward. But if you compare the God rays of the Cosmos against the Rift S, you will see that the Rift S still has the better lenses and there are less God rays in the Rift S. There's one more thing that I would like to mention when it comes to the optics of the Vive Cosmos, and that is the sweet spot, the spot where everything is perfectly clear. Unfortunately, the sweet spot here of the Vive Cosmos is really small. So you first have to find it, you have to fiddle with the device and put it in exactly the right spot. And then if you probably touched it or if it somehow gets out of that sweet spot, you very fast have a picture that is not clear anymore. And for that, without a doubt, the Rift S, for example, has a way better sweet spot even though it is much cheaper. In terms of FOV, unfortunately, this headset has exactly the same FOV like Vive and Vive Pro, the same as their predecessors. And honestly speaking, it starts to look a bit dated, especially when comparing that against the Valve Index. So the added FOV of the Valve Index is something that you can easily get used to. And then coming from the Index and then having a look through the Cosmos, that is really not nice. Until now, we have a pretty positive review, right? So we have a comfortable headset that is well built, that has nice and sharp displays, good lenses, is modular and pretty feature rich. Unfortunately, now we have to talk about the part where HTC has completely dropped the ball with the HTC Vive Cosmos. That is the controllers and more importantly, the tracking. Let's start with the tracking. And I can directly tell you that the Vive Cosmos has the worst tracking of any of the Six Degrees of Freedom tracked headsets that I've ever tested. And I've tested them all. So this tracking is dismal. And that's true for the headset tracking itself 
and for the tracking of the controllers. Let's start with the headset tracking. So on launch date, it was unbelievable. So this headset, it couldn't even track itself in the brightly lit studio. So I put on all the lights and this headset had problems tracking itself. I had to look around a lot and it needed more features, it said, but this studio is full of features. So it should easily be able to track itself. So the update came recently and now this is a bit better, but still sometimes the headset will tell me, hey, look around more. I don't quite yet have enough features, but I'm telling you, this has so many features here. It should be easy for the headset to track itself. Every other inside out tracked headset can easily track itself in this studio. Anyways, after the update, the headset tracking itself, it did get a bit better. The same cannot be said about the controller tracking, where these controllers get tracked by the six cameras. And I must say, it's quite a feat to deliver a headset with six cameras, so four cameras more than the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, that has the worst controller tracking of all these headsets, yes. Even the cheapest $200 Windows Mixed Reality headset will have a better controller tracking than this. But let me prove it to you. Let me show you the direct comparison against the Reverb tracking and the Rift S tracking. And let's start here with the Rift S. First of all, we do have finger tracking, not as good as with the Valve Index, but it's there. Now, what you can see here, I can come really close to the headset with my controllers. And that's normally a problem of the inside out tracked headsets and controllers. I can even touch the headset and the controllers are still perfectly being tracked. This is quite a feat and that is not normal. That is not easy. And well, you'll see the difference with the Cosmos later. Here now, what I'm doing right here now is I am aiming down the sides or I'm actually like mimicking this kind of gesture. And this is also not an easy task for inside out tracked headsets and controllers because of one of the controllers would normally be occluded. And as you can tell here, no problem at all for the Rift S. And also this action of using a bow and arrow, it also will work fine with the Rift S. Also here again, one of the controllers being included, I can still move both of them and both of them are nicely tracked. So this is the best inside out tracking that I've personally seen and you can find it with the Rift S and the Oculus Quest. Now, what we have here now, this is the controller tracking of the HP Reverb. So the Windows Mixed Reality controller tracking, it only has two cameras and really compare that with the six of the Cosmos later. And I can come very closely to the headset with the controllers and the controllers are still being tracked and it does work fine. What we don't have here with the Windows Mixed Reality controllers is the hand tracking. Now for the gesture of aiming down the side in a first person shooter, as you can tell, also for the Windows Mixed Reality controller tracking, it works fine, absolutely no problem. And I can play first person shooters with all of the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. And this is the HP Reverb, but it would just work as nice with the Lenovo Explorer that you can pick up for around 200 US dollars. So really good tracking with only two cameras. And also here with occluded controllers, no problem at all. It really does work fine. And now we finally get to the Vive Cosmos. So coming closer to the headset, I can tell already, I cannot come as close to the headset as with the Rift S or the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. When I get too close, well, then controller tracking will stop and you can see that the hands, they start to float around in a strange way. And well, I simply cannot get as close to the headset as I can with the other headsets. But now let's have a look at controller occlusion, like when we are in a first person shooter. And as you can tell directly here, the left hand, it completely stops to get tracked. 
and this didn't happen with any of the other headsets. So it's impossible to aim down the sights with the Vive Cosmos if you are in a first person shooter. I'm trying this also out with the other hand and the same thing is happening again. So it completely fails when trying to track the other included controller and all the other headsets can do it. Even the Windows Mixed Reality controllers that only have two cameras and this one has six. So it's really strange to, to see that. Also other kinds of occlusion here, trying this kind of things, it doesn't work. Have a look at how the controllers or the hands will float. It's it's just a complete failure and HTC has completely dropped the ball when it comes to controller tracking. As you can tell, controller tracking with the Vive Cosmos is ridiculously bad, especially in those situations where one controller would occlude the other, like for example, when aiming down the sights in a first person shooter, it's a complete fail where all the other inside out tracked headsets like the Windows Mixed Reality headsets or the Rift S or the Quest have no problems whatsoever. So if you're into these games, do not get the Vive Cosmos. I don't even know if HTC can still fix this. They had now more than a month to fix it, but they didn't do it. And if I was HTC, I would put all my resources into fixing that terrible tracking. Now let's talk about the controllers of the Vive Cosmos. So if you look at them, they are very comparable to those controllers of the Rift S and the Quest. Same design and also there's a thumbstick and we have two buttons and a menu button and here we have like actually two trigger buttons. So in terms of build quality, again, very nicely built, very sturdy and nothing to complain about. Now, when I tried them for the first time, I thought like, hey, nice, they are a bit bigger than the Rift S controllers. And especially for my big hands, sometimes I feel like the Rift S controllers could be a bit bigger. But now that I've tried them for a longer time, I kind of understand why the Rift S and Quest controllers are sized as they are sized. If you play a bit longer with these controllers, you will feel that they are too big. At least that's what I felt. I felt they're too big. And especially once you get a bit sweaty, they are so not nice to hold. And all the time you wanna get rid of them, you wanna get rid of your sweat and then go back to them, but it just doesn't feel right. The feeling is not good enough. And especially again, when playing longer periods of time, for me, it starts after 10 minutes. I don't like these controllers at all. Also for the battery life, is it as bad as was first reported? I wouldn't say that the battery life is so bad and that this would be like a showstopper. Yes, they have the shortest life of all the other controllers shorter than Windows Mixed Reality and Rift S, Quest and the Valve Index, but it's still acceptable. What's not so acceptable is again the tracking. It all comes down to the tracking, which simply is bad. And also like the form factor is too big for me, even though I have big hands and after a while you will simply feel tired because they're also quite a lot of heavier than the other controllers. Now let's talk about the software compatibility. Which games will you be able to play with the Vive Cosmos? The Vive Cosmos comes with its own store, Vive Port. And because I pre-ordered this device, I got one year of Vive Port Infinity free with the device, which is pretty amazing actually, because I do like the Vive Port Infinity idea. So it's like a Netflix of VR games, as in you can play as many games as you want out of the 500 plus games library. And really, I really do like this. That's from somebody who actually didn't want to install a Vive port at all before. So yes, this is something that does have potential and I believe HTC should definitely work more on this and make the software more polished because unfortunately, the polish is not there yet. For example, if Vive port will update itself afterwards, it asked me again, 
tell me your ID number. So please, again, confirm your age and these kind of little things which are really annoying. So it does need some more polish. Also, actually not all games in Viveport are actually compatible with the Cosmos. I tried to play Space Ops, which is in the Viveport Infinity subscription, but then it said no, the Cosmos is not compatible. Also some other games which actually, actually do work, somehow the, the buttons are not binded to the right action, so it does, still doesn't really feel like a very polished experience. And definitely there needs to be some more polish. Again, overall, I do like the Viveport Infinity idea. And if you have the chance to try Viveport for free, I encourage you to do it, especially for people who don't have lots of games on Steam already. It's really cool and you will find lots of great games on Viveport Infinity. So how about Steam VR compatibility? Well, the Cosmos is Steam VR compatible. Does that mean that every Steam VR game will work? Unfortunately, no. I tried Pavlov, I tried Contractors, and especially these two games, they didn't really work. There was a problem with the controllers, and it seems like that the developers of these games, they have to include some Cosmos libraries so that the controllers would work. And well, if they don't do so, bad luck. So compatibility to Steam VR is kind of questionable and it doesn't always work, which is of course a big problem, especially because you don't find Pavlov and contractors in Viveport Infinity, for example. So yeah, that is unfortunate. Now, how about Oculus games like, for example, Asgard's Wrath or Stormland? Well, you can use additional software that will allow you to play those games. And this software is called Revive. But will all of the upcoming Oculus games be Revive compatible and therefore Cosmos compatible? We don't know. Coming closer to the end of the review, I also want to talk about audio. I want to talk about the headphones and I want to talk about the microphone of the Cosmos. Let's start with the headphones. They are good. They are very comparable to the headphones of the HTC Deluxe Audio Strap. And I would actually say they are exactly the same. So then you know what to expect. Good sound and actually better sound than with the Rift S. However, if you compare the sound of the Cosmos headphones with those of the Valve Index, those free floating ones, definitely the Valve Index headphones will win hands down. Now for the microphone, I absolutely cannot understand HTC. The microphone is terrible, dismal, worst in class. And this has been like this from the original Vive to the Vive Pro and now also for the Vive Cosmos. But listen for yourself. This is the microphone of the Oculus Rift S. Peter Parker prefers pan pizza. This is the microphone of the Oculus Rift S. This is the microphone of the Valve Index. Peter Parker prefers pan pizza. This is the microphone of the Valve Index. This is how the Vive Cosmos microphone sounds like. Peter Parker prefers pan pizza. This is how the HTC Vive Cosmos microphone sounds like. I truly can't understand why HTC wouldn't invest another $5 to source a better microphone because this is just so bad. Now let's come to the conclusion of this review. In my opinion, the Vive Cosmos is a big missed opportunity for HTC. By no means this is a bad headset. It is very comfortable. It has great build quality. It has a nice sharp display with good lenses. It is modular and it has all the features that you would expect of a good headset. It might even be worth $699 or 799 euros if it wasn't for the dismal tracking, if it wasn't for the bad controllers, if it wasn't for the software being unpolished and not really compatible in all of the cases, and if it wasn't for the terrible microphone. So overall, I cannot recommend this to you at this moment in time in November 
2019. So probably HTC is still going to do something about the tracking and they need to if they want to sell any units of the Cosmos. Now, at this moment, I would rather recommend you to go for the Rift S. It is cheaper and you get a great headset that is compatible with all the software out there. You get great controllers with great tracking and you get a display and lenses with good quality and a good sweet spot. On the higher end, you could go for the Valve Index. The Valve Index is an amazing headset with a great display as well, with the best controllers on the market, with fantastic tracking for the headset and the controllers and a bigger FOV. But that's not even all. There are other headsets which are also amazing. Like on the lower end, you could go for the $299 Samsung Odyssey Plus, which for really lots of less money offers better tracking and also a great display. Or you could go for the HP Reverb, which also is cheaper than the Vive Cosmos and it will also have better controller tracking and a better display. In the beginning of this review, I already told you that for the vast majority of viewers, this headset will not be the right one for you. So for who is it then? Well, for all the people who don't care about tracking at all and still want to have a new and well-built headset and for all of you who want a new PC VR headset that is also be able to be used wirelessly because yes, this is the only headset that came out in 2019 that supports wireless use with this here, the Vive wireless adapter and the wireless adapter attachment kit for the Cosmos. For more than $300 and more than 400 euro, if you're in Europe, you can get this set and you can make the Vive Cosmos wireless. This is a great thing. I just received this today, bought it myself as well, and I'm going to thoroughly review it and I'm going to give the Vive Cosmos another chance. And probably in two weeks or so, when I give you the review on these, Probably HTC will give us better controller tracking. If yes, I will for sure let you know. And that's it for the full MRTV review of the HTC Vive Cosmos. I really hope that you enjoyed this review and I hope that you feel well informed now. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV yet, do so now and click on the bell button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. That's it and I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.